Serious, psychiatrists of Reddit. How would you go about treating someone like Arthur Fleck from Joker? Psychiatrist here. I'd first have to examine him to establish a diagnosis prior to starting treatment. If he had schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder, for the aerotomanic delusions, he would likely receive a trial or two of second generation antipsychotic medication like olanzapine. If those wouldn't work, then a high potency first generation antipsychotic medication like haloperidol. If that doesn't work, then maybe clozapine or electroconvulsive therapy and then as a last line, a trial of a combination of multiple antipsychotic medications. Note that the worst of his behavior did not start until after he ran out of medication. As for the inappropriate laughing, I'd refer him to a neurologist to confirm diagnosis of pseudobulbar affect, which could have been caused by traumatic brain injury sustained as a child. If the diagnosis was confirmed and I could find a way for the medication to be paid for, I'd maybe try dextromethorphan quinidine, new dexter. Referral to a psychologist for individual CBT for schizophrenia. If that was the diagnosis, definitely no group therapy. Inpatient hospitalization after he broke into that girl's house. For however long it takes to initiate treatment and establish that he is no longer dangerous. If I found out about the murders, definitely referral to law enforcement and hopefully followed by long term treatment in a state hospital or prison. And no, he clearly does not just have a personality disorder. He demonstrates frank delusions, which are a symptom of psychosis. Personality disorders alone do not cause delusions like that. I'm a psychiatrist as well. This is an excellent treatment plan for this kind of situation. Makes reasonable tentative diagnosis and presents good research backed options. This could be interesting, because Joaquin Phoenix has said that he tried to portray Arthur in such a way that he would be undialyzable, and thus untreatable, by a psychiatrist. Now that's silly, I'm undiagnosed and the doctors give me meds to help with my personal problems. Part of determining the ongoing diagnosis is how one reacts to meds. He laughs due to extreme discomfort with how he is feeling he is unable to soothe himself the way a normal person does, so it comes out in the odd laughter. It's actually a real condition. I actually laugh myself when I am nervous and want to cry but I am in a public place. So far I have seen two characters who laugh when in distress and it makes me happy because before I didn't know it could happen to someone else. There is no way to treat someone with loneliness besides showing them actual care and affection. You can't treat them like a crazy person and only be helping them because it's your job. Yep, my dad who works as a psychiatrist at a state prison once told me when I asked him what it's like. Most of them aren't bad people. They've made mistakes, some worse than others, but they're also my patients. I'll always show them compassion. Yet, yeah, he takes the Hippocratic Oath very seriously. I mean, to my interpretation, he enjoyed violence and the medication was a sedative to put him too out of it to put it together. He ran out of medication, stopped hallucinating a little while after, said he felt better after the subway shooting, then let himself go. I would assume he'd be in jail forever after a slip up somewhere along the way, since he would just try over and over to murder people. I thought that was why he told the social worker all he has are bad thoughts because the medication was not suppressing them enough. I believe he had pseudobulbar affect from the trauma he received as a child. I cared for someone with it. The struggle to stop the laughing while crying or stress looked so familiar. As for the rest, well, I wanted him not to end up the joker. He seemed like he could be a good person, but he wasn't. There was too much about him that was sociopathic. He did revel in the violence. Even if he spared some people he still revealed in killing others and seeing others killed. During the riots he seemed ecstatic. I don't think you can treat him. Maybe keep him sedated and hope for the best. I think he was ecstatic because everyone in the riots was giving him attention and he wasn't ignored by everyone. Seeing as we can't trust Arthur's narrative throughout the movie, did Arthur actually die in that fridge? It was one of those old style fridges as well that only opens from the outside I believe. I mean the scene was just there and the very next scene he's getting a phone call from the Murray show to be on it and then all heck breaks loose. So, my wife is basically the social worker in this movie. She works at the state mental facility setting up social services for people that need them. 
She works together with a therapist, a psychiatrist, and a couple of other social workers. We had this discussion last night after we finally had enough free time to see the movie. She was of the opinion that he probably could have been successfully treated with the correct antipsychotic medication, and the laughing tick could at least be somewhat more controlled with anti-seizure medications, same as Toretto's. She made a point to separate Heath Ledger's Joker, who is clearly a socio-psychopath. Whereas Arthur seems to have a more schizotypal disorder, especially with the delusions. She works with people like this every day, and the delusions range from can't tell if this actually happened to clearly you are not Jesus. Anyway, yeah, he would be treated for schizophrenia and given medications to help control his tics, and would need at least inpatient therapy. Now, if we're talking about after he makes the turn, the treatment would likely be the same, except he would likely be institutionalized for life. I am a psychiatric nurse practitioner but my job is essentially similar to a psychiatrist. I think an appropriate diagnosis for him would be something like paranoid schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. Medications would include antipsychotics like olanzapine or haldol and he could be given something to stabilize his mood as well like lamictal or possibly lithium if his condition warranted that. Besides medication I think it would help him to understand there are professionals that care about him. I think part of the frustration of that character was that he felt that the world was falling apart around him and that he was just asking for help and he wasn't getting it. The mental health care field isn't equipped to deal with an Arthur Fleck only sedate him. They can institutionalize him, medicate him, refer him to therapists, but they can't help someone that far gone. He has to help himself and learn to control the chaos. Look at the answers here. None of them say anything near as much as helping him live a normal life. Furthermore, it begs the question as to the piece of crap subhuman who would want to have power over the downtrodden. Arthur didn't necessarily do wrong. He just went about everything in the wrong way. Psychotherapy, maybe antidepressant, maybe sodium valproate, if things get dicey, perhaps something like olanzapine. Much of his problems seem to be social in nature too. Not too much a psychiatrist can do there, apart from a social work or community support referral. The childhood trauma may possibly be addressed through psychological therapy, perhaps dynamic therapy, the Abbey. Well, that's a little beyond the reach of medical technology. A little valproate or risperidone, etc. might alleviate the problematic behaviors that stem from that. Bottom line though, not everyone should have kids or be around kids. You know the sad thing about this movie is that it gives the vibe that people with mental illness end up as murdering psychopaths, when in reality people with mental illness are more like disabled and socially awkward at worst in most cases. In most wars, murders and rapes are committed by sane people in desperation of their goals. Hey buttholes, the title clearly says psychiatrists. If you're a cogsy undergrad or you read a chemistry primer once, Keep your opinion to yourself and stop spamming this thread. Let the pros talk. Nobody cares you know what SSRI stands for. I think he's depressed, schizophrenic, and perhaps some other type of brain damage, affecting his processing and emotional irregularity, each in combination caused by the childhood abuse, physical trauma, and mother's mental illness. I believe at least the schizophrenia is genetically passed on. I definitely don't think he's psychopathic sociopathic and in different circumstances. Given a healthy home life, proper support system, and effective health care, he would have grown up just fine. Maybe a few mental health problems, but hopefully things that could be manageable if handled correctly. I'm not a psychiatrist. So I would have no idea how to treat him, but I think the things I mentioned above would have at least prevented some of his problems and assisted with any others. I've seen a lot of people suffer schizophrenia due to stress and depressions, so this makes me believe that all he needed was affection, which was shown by his hallucinations. He just needed someone to laugh with. It's a movie about how a person gets broken down little by little until he just doesn't care about life anymore. It's a beautiful movie and a scary one considering there are protests all around the globe right now and some politicians just don't understand there are actually people like him living among us. Med student currently on psych neuro rotation. He'd be a forensic, someone who has committed that did a crime. 
while in the psychiatric hospital he'd get an initial eval to see what's going on and be treated based on what DSM-5 criteria he met. From what I saw from the film, he had audiovisual hallucinations, clearly homicidal suicidal ideation, a history of traumatic events, and emotional lability. None of those things by themselves and without knowing a timeline can give you diagnosis. For the sake of argument let's say he has schizophrenia, PTSD, and antisocial PD. Even though he probably doesn't have antisocial PD, schizophrenia is treated with either a typical, haloperidol, flufenazine, etc., or atypical, quetiapine, risperidone, etc., antipsychotic. Quetiapine has the least side effects so they'll probably start him on that. For his PTSD you use an SSRI SNRI but it takes at least a month to see the effects of those. There really isn't anything that treats an it's social PD. People that get aggressive have a code called on them and they get whatever that institution's version of a Bentley is. It's a cocktail of calm that butt down medications. We would encourage him to attend group psych sessions and work on getting him back to baseline. He would be in that institution as long as the court mandates. I found an article yesterday of course I can't find it now, in which a psychiatrist diagnosed the Joker with bipolar disorder type 1. He has severe manic episodes with psychotic features, and pseudobulbar affect, random laughing spells caused by head trauma. Their days. Both can be managed with medication and therapy. She also noted that he has psychopathic tendencies. Nobody had addressed the scene about getting fired for bringing the gun to the children's hospital. Why wouldn't he leave it in his locker? Why did he have it on his person? When he got fired he said I love this job what was his intention? Or do you think it was a wholehearted accident? I know everyone knows dang well it wasn't a prop. Is Arthur a liar? Or was he just trying to save his job? Also at that point he did not know that Randall had told his boss that he wanted to buy a gun from him. Any replies would be insightful. Okay I read through lots of the posts, and most people seem to agree it seems likely he would have some schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder, as well as potential PTSD, depression, brain trauma exed. However, no one has yet to point out his underdevelopment. Can we talk about this for a second? He seems underdeveloped as well, mentally and socially. We see that his handwriting is that of a child. He has a tough time writing and draws doodles, much like a child. His language is also very simple and childish, and the way he interacts with his mother seems like that of a small child trying to please his mother. He is obviously socially awkward and has a difficult time reading social cues. This of course, would typically be an autistic tray. There are though times, where he suddenly seems strangely coherent. Like when the police officers confront him outside of the hospital and he is smoking. Is the movie suggesting it is because he is off his meds so he thinks more clearly? But then he is back talking like an insecure child again in the next scene. The movie is probably trying to make it vague on purpose, but it is super interesting to discuss nonetheless. Definitely a developmental disorder or intellectual disability. I know as I have it. His mom also had NPD as said in the movie so he may have a comorbid diagnosis. He seemed to have a form of schizophrenia with seeing and hearing things that aren't there, and the laughing disorder didn't seem to be linked to mental instability, but he actually just seems like a person with harsh levels of depression and schizophrenia snapping after everything in his life goes wrong. And at this point near the end of the movie he has an ideology over a mental disorder. A lot of healthy and stable people can even snap similar to him. And at that point you can't medicate him in a way that would help without full sedation. If the physical abuse from his mom caused brain damage, then anything is possible and is impossible to tell from the information given but couldn't be helped with modern technology in the decades since the incident occurred. I don't really like the depiction of people with mental illness as dangerous individuals. I have to be from the several times my vehicle hit IEDs in the Middle East as well as combat related PTSD. Most of the guys I hang around with do too. Nobody in our group have any interest in hurting anybody who isn't trying to hurt them first. But out of all the guys I know who have been through the same crap I have, Four have committed suicide in the last year. Being depicted as dangerous feral monsters definitely doesn't help people suffering mental illness, brain damage, or recovering from trauma. Realistically he'd be given to the prison system. 
he's a psychopath and a social personality disorder. There really is no successful cure for these is disorders and usually they end up in jail or as presidents. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.